Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. Um, and I am not going to do a big intro because this is going to be a very long video because this is where I'm going to talk to you about all the exciting books coming out in September and I have stacks. So no further ado, let's get into it. Some of them I've talked about before. Some of you have heard of them, um, but I definitely want to remind you that all of these books come out in September here in the United States um, and will be available for purchase. And I know that these are going to wind up on your TBR, so get out your pens, your papers, your Goodreads, and let's get started. The first book I've talked about a number of times on my channel, and that is She Would Be King by Wayutu Moore. This is coming out from Grey Wolf Press. I got this at Book Expo America as one of their six big buzz books. This is the story of the birth of Liberia, told through the eyes of three characters. It has a bit of magical realism in it. They seem to have some sort of magical powers. Um, and they come from three different worlds and come together. Um, everyone I know that has read this has said it is very, very good. I'm going to pick it up in September and read it. Grey Wolf Press has never let me down. I did get to see her in person also, um, and she is she is just amazing. Um, and I don't know that if you, but I haven't, read a lot of books set in Liberia or know very much about the history of the country of Liberia. Um, so I am super excited about this everywhere. This book is the talk of the town. So She Would Be King by Wayu Tumor. This is again out by um, Grey Wolf Press and out in September. Definitely get your hands on this. I have a feeling we'll be hearing about it this year. A book that I don't need to talk to too much about because it's been out in the UK for uh, quite some time and it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize over there. That is The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogene Hermes Gower. This um, comes out in the US this month in September. This is set in the 1700s, 1785, when the captain of a ship returns to a ship to find out that someone has sold his ship uh, for a mermaid. And then sort of what happens then, everyone is fascinated. I, again, I've heard heard that this is a historical romp that you will totally love. Um, I'm going to do a big book month where I just read books that are chunksters and probably read less than I normally would, and this is going to be one of them. And again, this cover is phenomenal. So again, that's The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock by Imogene um, Hermes Gower. Okay, a book that I raved about in the, my first half of my wrap-up and comes out in September, I believe in the U.S., and the UK. That is Transcription by Kate Atkinson. This is phenomenal, you guys. This is so good. So this is the story of Juliet Armstrong. She's 18 in 1940 when she is brought into the world of being a spy. The book goes through definitely uh, three different time periods, but one of them is very short. The very start of the book is the 80s where she is hit by a car, and then she starts to reminisce. She talks about the 1950s after 10 years after she was involved in the spy unit. unit she works for the BBC. Um, and people from when she was a spy start to pop up. And then we go back to the 40s and we learn about how she became a spy and what she was involved in. If you want, and it, it's told so realistically, this is not like about a woman who is crawling through vents and, you know, uh, shooting guns down hallways. This is about a woman who is actually like infiltrating um, the fascist movement in the UK. It is really, really good. Really, really good. Highly recommend just transcription by Kate Atkinson. And yeah, it will be out this month. Another book that was talked about at BEA America is a book that you should look out for is the nonfiction no uh, book, The Real Lolita, The Kidnapping of Sally Horner, and the novel that scandalized the world by Sarah Weinman. This is the true story of the young girl that Lolita, the novel by Nabokov, is uh, written about. It was a true story of a girl who went into a store, um, stole some gum, came out, and a guy said he was a member of the FBI, and if she didn't do everything he said, he would turn her into a parent and the, uh, the police, she did, and he wound up kidnapping her for two years. Um, and it wasn't until she was in California that she was able to make a phone call and escape. And then you also get in this the birth and impetus of the novel Lolita and how that came into being. Um, so Sarah Wyman is one of those people that I have always meant to read. I know she's done a lot of collections about noir, 
um, female writers of like the 40s and 50s. Um, and um, I follow her on Twitter and I totally am excited about this. I don't read a ton of nonfiction and I really should. Um, so this comes out in September. This is out by Echo Books. And when does it come out? Do I have an exact date? Sometimes it's easy to find the date when things are coming out. It just says September, so there you go. And that's The Real Lolita by Sarah Weinman, and I highly recommend that. If you like books about books, that's probably one in the way books come into um, play. There you go. Um, this book is called The Boy in, um, I'm sorry, The Boy at the Keyhole by Stephen Giles, and this is by Hanover Square Press. Um, and the reason I picked this up at Book Expo America is because it says, if you're a fan of Shirley Jackson, Sarah Waters, and Daphne du Maurier, this is the debut for you. This is about a boy left alone in his family's English estate with a housekeeper he suspects murdered his mother. Come on. Come on. Um, one, and I think the cover is just really clever too. So I highly recommend that you guys find this one because I have a feeling a lot of you are going to love it. So again, this is The Boy at the Keyhole by Stephen Giles, and this is out by Hanover Square Press out this month. Sounds to me like that will be an October read. Doesn't that sound like a good spooky October read? Two graphic novels to tell you about. One I've already talked about um, in my what I was going to be reading, um, and I'll be wrapping it up because I've already read it, and that is Upgrade Soul uh, by Ezra Clayton Daniels. This is out by Lion Forge. This is um, sort of a science fiction take on an older couple at, celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary who decide to become part of an experiment in order to be reborn and relive their life together and all the stuff that goes wrong. Um, it is really well drawn. The story is compelling. Um, the science is interesting. The villains are, are great. Um, and it just, it has a lot of really interesting stuff that goes on in it. And a lot of things about themes and topics that you'll find interesting. I don't want to talk about it too much. I'll talk about it in my wrap up. Uh, but again, so Upgrade Souls out in September by Lion Forge by Ezra Clayton Daniels. The next one I have is a slim little thing, and I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet, but this is Oblivion Song. This is um, by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo de Felici. And this is, um, a, a, this is sort of a, because you can tell it's this dystopian world. There you go for some art. Um, 3,000 citizens in, Fidel in Philadelphia disappeared into Oblivion. Um, the government supposedly did everything they could to try to rescue them and could not. And this is a story of one man who won't give up. So I think that sounds really good. I think that sounds like just a good uh, dive in to um, just a new world, a new take. And yeah, so I'm excited. And that's Oblivion Song by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo de Felis. Uh, Felici. And this is out by Image Comics. Love myself some Image Comics. Highly recommended by them. So there you go. Okay. Moving on. I'm talking fast. Hopefully you guys are getting enough about these books. Um, the next book I'm super excited to get to is The Dictionary of Animal Languages by um, Heidi Sompinka. This is out by Scribe. This is the story um, of it's sort of between the world wars, and this is the story of Ivory. She comes from an affluent family, but she decides to flee to Paris and become part of the Surrealist movement, and she falls in love with a married Russian artist, and life is going one way, and World War II um, interrupts. Um, and this has been one of my want-to-reads this year, so I'm super excited. Um, I think it is going to be excellent. So that's The Dictionary of Animal Languages by Heidi Sopinka, out by Scribe, out in September. Definitely pick this one up. Am I still talking too fast? I wonder. A middle grade YA book that everyone is talking about is Pride by Ivy Zoboy. And she was nominated for the National Book Award last year for American, I want to say it was American Graffiti, but I'm not sure that that was the name of that book. And I don't have the name of it here. But, um, yeah, sorry about that. That was a b brief little pause. This is a retelling of um, Pride and Prejudice set in Brooklyn. And I love, just the first one is, the, it's a truth universally acknowledged that when rich people move into the hood, where it's a little bit broken and a little bit forgotten, the first thing they want to do is clean it up. I've read about 50 pages of this one. It is 
really good. It has um, sort of a tone, if you guys are a fan of Star from um, Angela Thomas's book, um, The Hate You Give, I think you'll like the main character of Pride. They definitely have that, um, that sort of just strong young woman attitude that is just so compelling. Um, so that's Pride by Ibby Zoboy, and this comes out in September, and I have a feeling you guys are gonna see this a lot of places, because a lot of, this was a long line to get this copy, just letting you know. Um, another middle grade book that's coming out, which I'm super excited to read, is um, Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Now, Catherine Arden wrote The Bear and the Nightingale, um, it's really hot here, so I apologize. My air conditioning keeps kicking on, um, but it is warm outside, so I have to keep it on. Um, so she wrote The Bear and the Nightingale, which I really, really enjoyed, and I'm about to read the rest of the series. I got to meet her. She is just adorable. And it says, this is about a book. This is a book about a young girl and a book. After suffering a tragic loss, 11-year-old Ollie only finds solace in books. So when she happens upon a crazed woman at a river threatening to throw a book into the water, Ollie doesn't think. She just acts, stealing the book and running away. As she begins to read the slender volume, Ollie discovers a chilling story about a girl named Beth, the two brothers who loved her, and a peculiar deal made with the smiling man, a sinister specter who grants your most tightly held wish, but only for the ultimate price. Now, this book is being blurbed by um, R.L. Stein, so... That comes with high recommendation. Um, and I, again, I think this is a perfect October read if you're looking for something for a young reader in your life. I'm going to be reading it, so maybe you read it with them. So that's Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. But I think my copy is signed, if I am not mistaken. Signed. Awesome! Um, two books out that are coming out by um, Coach House, which is a small independent press. It does some amazing stuff. Um, the first one is Splits Willie by Howard Ackler. Now, this is the story of, so it start, it's two things. Hal, it's 1971. Hal is a, he runs a used bookstore. Business isn't great. He meets a woman and gets in a relationship with this activist woman, and then he disappears. That is one half of the story. The other story is half a century later, his nephew comes back and he's waiting for his baby to be born and starts to investigate what happened to his uncle. This is a slim little book for all of that to occur in. Um, so that's Howard Ackler's Splits Willie out this month from Coach House Books. Okay, the other book I have by them is, I'm gonna read the back of this one because it's um, got a little more complicated of a plot. But that's um, Queen Solomon by Tamara Faith Berger. I'm going to hold that up for you right there. It says, It's just another boring summer for our teenage narrator until Barbara arrives. An Ethiopian Jew, Barbara was flown to Israel at age five as part of Operation Solomon. And now our narrator's, our narrator's well-intentioned father has brought her as a teen to their home for the summer. But Barbara isn't the docile and grateful orphan they expect. And soon our narrator, terrified of her and drawn to her in equal measures, finds himself immersed in her compulsive psychosexual games as she binge drinks and lies to his family. Things go terribly wrong and Barbara flees. But seven years later, as our narrator is getting his life back on track with a new girlfriend and a master's degree in the Holocaust studies underway, Barbara shows up at our narrator's house once again, her spiritual teacher in tow, and our narrator finds his politics and his sanity back in question. You guys, doesn't that sound amazing? I don't know. Part of me just wants to read this right now. Um, so that's Queen Solomon by Tamara Faith Berger out in September from Coach House. If you haven't checked out Coach House, please do so. They are publishing amazing stuff. One more YA book to talk about before we're done, and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. I've mentioned this. This was in the YA buzz panel at Book Expo America. This is about Sadie and her, um, excuse me, younger sister. So uh, Sadie's younger sister is killed uh, by a man in her mother's life, and Sadie goes across the country searching for him, for revenge. That is one half of the story. The other half of the story is a young reporter who is sort of 
intrigued and winds up being roped into following Stady's story and creating a podcast about what he is doing as he follows her to find her, not understanding exactly what she is on her path to do, only that she is missing. Now, a lot of people read this in one night at Book Expo America. My friend Emily at Possibly Literate has read it and gives it a good review. So I'm excited for it. Courtney Summers is a well-known well known YA author. Um, so I think it sounds good. I think it sounds a little serial-esque um, in nature if you guys listen to that podcast. But I also think that it's got a unique format. So I'm super excited to see what that is. So that's Sadie by Courtney Summers. And that is also out this September. So that was a lot of books. I got through all of those books in 15 minutes. So that's pretty impressive. If you want to know more, if I didn't give you enough, ask me below. I'll try to give you a bit more of a blurb in the comment section. Have you guys heard about any of these? Which one of them just made it on your TBR? Which ones are you going to go out the day they are available? As always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. If this is your first video, welcome. I do one of these every month and I tell you about the books that I'm excited coming out every month. And as always, happy reading and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye!